Gliding into the VGC 2020 season at dizzying speeds, Dragapult not only finds a niche as a physical sweeper, but as a fast support Pokémon. Because of its versatility and power, it's become the most commonly used Pokémon in the early metagame. Today I'll be breaking down Dragapult and explaining the many roles it can play on a VGC team. Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm Moxie Boosted. It seems like you all really enjoyed my breakdown and analysis of my Sandaconda Paris Trap team, so I found it only fitting that I do a similar video where I analyze Dragapult, which is a Pokemon that I'm sure you've all seen plenty of since Sword and Shield have dropped. But also since Sword and Shield, the support on the channel has been through the roof, with us reaching well over 7,000 subscribers. Let's try to hit 10k before Valentine's Day. If we can do that, I promise I will love you for literally forever. If you want to help out another way though, let's try to hit 200 likes on this video and comment your answer to my question of the day, which is what do you think about Dragapult and how would you run it in this format? With that all out of the way, let's talk about Dragapult. First things first, I need to complain. Being a physics major, I and many other people know for a fact that the trebuchet is the superior ballistic weapon, so I've updated Dragapult to work more efficiently as the Pokemon Trebufiend. Jokes aside, Dragapult is a ghost dragon type and the fastest new Pokemon introduced to us this generation besides Dog with a Knife. 142 base speed leaves all other relevant Pokemon in the dust. Non-speed boosting nature Dragapult are actually only outsped by speed boosting nature Dragapult and speed boosting nature Barrascuta, while speed tying with jolly max speed Weavile. That being said, the prevalence of Dragapult in the format means that safely using Dragapult will require you to run a speed boosting nature 90% of the time, and even then you'll only be getting a speed tie. Offensively, Dragapult has some pretty decent stats. 120 attack and 100 special attack are above average or good at best. However, these stats become dangerous when put on a Pokemon as fast and with as good of coverage as Dragapult. Its two stabs, Ghost and Dragon, are actually only resisted by two Pokemon in the entire game, being Bisharp and Grimmsnarl. Bulk-wise, Dragapult falls on the frail side of average with 88 HP and 75 in both its defense and special defense stats. Its typing also doesn't do it many favors when it comes to living hits. It takes super effective damage from some of the most common and powerful offensive typings in the format, being Dark, Fairy, Dragon, Ghost, and Ice. On the other side of the coin though, it does have some pretty great resistances and immunities. It takes not very effective damage from Water, Fire, Grass, Bug, Poison, and Electric moves. On top of that, it's immune to both normal and fighting moves, which means you can't hit this thing with a fake out. Finally, its abilities are pretty amazing as well. Clear Body makes it immune to stat drops from its opponents, so Dragapult isn't bothered at all by Intimidate, Snarl, or Icy Wind. However, this ability doesn't protect it from status conditions that would effectively lower its stats. It can still be slowed down by Paralysis, and its attack can be cut in half by Burn. Its ability Infiltrator is seeing niche use on hyper-offensive Dragapult teams because of the ability to bypass Substitute and Screens, which are actually seeing more usage within the format because of the viability of both Grimmsnarl and G-Max Lapras. Its hidden ability Curse Body is seeing the least use of all, but can still find a niche on Substitute Dragapult sets by disabling the moves that hit Dragapult or its Substitute. Now, I personally can't decide whether this strategy is cheese or sauce, so we'll put it somewhere in between with Chipotle Queso. With that overview out of the way, let's talk movesets. In all honesty, Dragapult is a Pokemon I'd describe as a beginner Pokemon, and that isn't a slight to people who use it or even the Pokemon itself. What I mean by that is that when it comes to building movesets or EV spreads for it, it's very straightforward. You will almost never run into anything other than max speed, and there are very few reasons to invest much into HP. However, as the meta develops, I fully expect this Pokemon to see more bulky EV spreads. But as of right now, bulky Dragapult sets are extremely rare and very niche. Let's talk about the most common sets you'll see on the ladder. First up, we have Jolly Life Orb or Focus Sash. This thing runs 4 HP, max attack, max speed with a Jolly Nature, clear body, and either a Life Orb or a Focus Sash as the item. Its moveset is Dragon Claw, Phantom Force, Protect, and Dragon Dance. I can't recommend Dragon Darts because Dragapult picks up more KOs reliably with Dragon Claw, but if you want to use it, go right ahead. Its role is simply to do huge damage. Set up a Dragon Dance or two and you'll start picking up major KOs while outspeeding just about everything in the format. Focus Sashes are better for teams lacking redirection or disruption moves like Follow Me or Fake Out because it makes getting a Dragon Dance off much easier. But when you spank a Life Orb onto that thing, Dragapult will start to blush with the sheer amount of damage it's going to put out. Prime example, Dragapult after one Dragon Dance beats Dynamax Dragapult. At plus one, Dragon Claw does a minimum of 97.5%, while Phantom Force is a guaranteed one hit KO. And honestly, at that point, the list of things this thing one shots goes on for a while, but a few highlights are going to be Max HP Sylveon with Phantom Force, Max HP Ndidi with Dragon Claw, Max HP Hatterene with Phantom Force, 
Draco Vish with Dragon Claw, 4 HP Wimscott with Phantom Force, Excadrill with Phantom Force, and 4 HP Rotom with Phantom Force. But the list only gets bigger when you Dynamax. Max Phantasm will drop 4 HP Togekiss, Max HP Arcanine, and Max HP Conkeldur. And Max Wormwind can Oko Max HP Snorlax. So yeah, Dragapult does big boy damage. You could also try to run a Choice Spec set, which deals less damage, but has more immediate offensive potential without any setup. This set runs 4 HP, 252 Special Attack, 252 Speed with a Modest Nature, Infiltrator, and the item Choice Specs. Its moveset is Shadow Ball, Draco Meteor, Flamethrower, and Thunderbolt. While Dragapult only has 100 special attack, its high speed and choice specs make this one of the most immediately threatening Pokemon in the format. The ability Infiltrator also allows Dragapult to bypass screens and substitutes which would otherwise serve as a way to play around such a threatening Pokemon. Draco Meteor will drop Pokemon like 4 HP Arcanine, Dracovish, and Max HP Torkoal. Shadow Ball will one-shot 252 HP Hatterene, and two-shot Special Defensive Dusclops or most everything in the format. Its coverage moves in Flamethrower and Thunderbolt will KO some pretty relevant Pokemon in the format. Flamethrower will KO Whimsicott and Excadrill, and Thunderbolt will KO Gyarados and Braviary. I mentioned the things that this thing can do Dynamaxed, if it weren't for the fact that in most cases it'll do more damage while not Dynamaxed. This is because this Pokemon loses its choice specs when it's Dynamaxed, but if you absolutely have to Dynamax this Pokemon, such as in a case where you've already locked yourself into a move but you need to click another one, you can reap the benefits of the defense drops and attack drops from both Max Phantasm and Max Wormwind respectively. But just like Yin and Yang, Dragapult attack, but he also protect. Dragapult has access to a wide variety of support moves like Will-O-Wisp, Taunt, Helping Hand, Disable, and most importantly Dual Screens. Its high speed allows it to be one of the most reliable Pokemon for setting up screens. Despite this, Dragapult can run dual screens and still run max speed and max attack, but of course you'll adjust the bulk to fit your specific needs. This set is 4 HP, 252 attack, 252 speed with a jolly nature, clear body, and light clay or a focus sash. Its moveset is light screen, reflect, dragon claw, and phantom force. However, you could also attempt a special attacking set by replacing max attack jolly nature, phantom force, and dragon claw with max special attack tibbin nature, shadow ball, and draco meteor respectively. This set is great for reliably setting up screens and reducing the damage taken by your side of the field for nearly the entire game if you opt for the Light Clay over a Focus Sash. This set pairs amazingly with weakness policy Pokemon such as Tyranitar, Duraludon, and Excadrill. On top of that, if these Pokemon Dynamax, the damage they take are negligible at best. So yeah, Dragapult actually fills a pretty sweet role as a support Pokemon because of that high speed. Offensively, it won't do as much as the other sets, but it's still pretty great. The final set I have for you is straight from Chipotle, ready for your consumption between the cheese and the sauce, sitting comfortably as a cheese sauce. This set is 252 attack, 4 defense, 252 speed with a jolly nature, the ability curse body, and leftovers. The move set is Substitute, Will-O-Wisp, Dragon Claw, and Phantom Force. Dragapult's extremely high speed and immunity to fake out make it extremely easy for this Pokemon to get a substitute off. This set requires odd HP to get the most bang for your buck since it's easier to get more substitutes off that way. Behind a substitute, Dragapult is able to spread Will-O-Wisp burns to physical attackers much more safely. Dragon Claw is your primary offensive option, but Phantom Force will make Dragapult intangible for a turn, allowing it more leftovers recovery and thus more substitutes. Also, let's say that a Duraludon breaks your substitute with a Draco Meteor or Dragon Pulse. Because of the ability Curse Body, there's a 30% chance that the move will be immediately disabled, removing that threat of a KO. Something to note about this set though is that it doesn't benefit much from Dynamaxing, because Dynamax Pokemon lose their substitutes once they transform. However, Dynamaxing isn't out of the question for this set, because once again you can reap the benefits of Max Wormwind and Max Phantasm stat drops. But that's the last of the example sets I have for you. Remember that you can adjust these sets as necessary to fit your team's needs. Now it's time to get into partners and counters. Partner-wise, Dragapult fits onto most every team comp, rain, sand, sun, whatever, but it's most comfortably slapped onto balanced teams, so I'll be highlighting a few standout Pokemon from those archetypes. Togekiss is this Pokemon's most prominent partner and for good reason. It's immune to dragon moves that opposing Dragapult want to use on your Dragapult. Follow Me can reliably redirect those hits onto itself, allowing your Dragapult to set up a dragon dance to guarantee the outspeed on the following turn, or just KO their Dragapult immediately. 
Rotom Watch is another common partner that helps Dragapult along by spamming Will-O-Wisp to cripple the attack stats of threatening Pokemon like Tyranitar, Grimmsnarl, or opposing Dragapult, or even Thunder Waving opposing Dragapult to cut their speed. That will allow your Dragapult to reliably pick up the KO on the following turn. Finally, Arcanine is a fine Intimidator and Will-O-Wisp user that can cripple the attack stats of opposing threatening Pokemon like Dragapult, Grimmsnarl, or Tyranitar. It's also able to threaten Whimsicott with Fire-type moves, which would otherwise be able to deal major damage to your Dragapult with a super effective stab Moonblast. In terms of counters, there are quite a few. Grimmsnarl is the most prominent one of these. It can resist both of Dragapult's stab moves and threaten to one-shot it with either Darkest Lay Rat or Play Rough, coming off of its massive 120 base attack stat. It can also cripple Dragapult's speed by using Prankster Thunder Wave. Togekiss can also threaten Dragapult by eating up one of its hits and hitting it hard with a max Starfall. Tyranitar's great bulk and attack stats make it a huge threat to Dragapult. Tyranitar can easily soak up one of its hits and hit it back with a crunch one-shotting it as well. My point here is that most Dark and Fairy types have the tools and stats necessary to beat Dragapult reliably, so if your team is lacking one, do your best to find a spot for them. Dragapult is the most common Pokemon in the format, so it's kind of irresponsible for you not to have a counter. But that's all I really have to say about Dragapult today. What do you guys think about it? Do you think it deserves the high usage stats it's seeing right now, or do you think it's actually really overrated? Let me know in the comment section below and also answer the poll up top. If you enjoy my videos and want to support the channel, there are plenty of ways to do that. You can leave a like, subscribe, and comment to give me a boost, no pun intended. Also consider supporting me on Patreon. By supporting me on Patreon for just $1 a month, you get to see your name at the end of my videos and gain access to my exclusive Patreon team building live streams every weekend. Be sure to check out the links in the description to my Discord, Twitch, and Twitter. I livestream every weekday around 5pm CST. Oh, and I'm also hosting a VGC 2020 competition this Saturday, so check out my community tab on YouTube or my Discord to get more information about that. But with all that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. Once I reach 10k subscribers, I'll actually do a full analysis on Charizard while eating insanely spicy hot wings. I'm not kidding, I will actually do that for you guys. Thanks for watching everyone, have a nice night and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!